Salarpuria Sattva. Trust, it's what we build. Presents the Realty Debate powered by Reliance Home Finance with Manisha Natarajan. Welcome to the Realty Debate. Our spotlight today is on the big mission of the government, Housing for All. Where is it really going? Now, two out of five years of the Modi-led NDA government are complete. And we know how quickly time flies. So, is the mission of Housing for All on the runway yet or not? Otherwise, how is it going to take off? Remember, this was a mandate that the government floated. It was part of the election mandate. And, and then it was made official last year. So, a year later is the most pertinent question to be asking. Joining us, Niranjan Hira Nandani, CMD Hira Nandani Group and President Naretko West. Also with us, Gulam Zia, Executive Director, Advisory Retail and Hospitality, Knight Frank India. Sudhir Vora, Principal Architect, Sudhir Vora Consultants and Urban Planner and Urban Law Expert. Dr. M. Ramachandran, former Secretary, Ministry of Urban Development and his voice would be so important because he's been in the thick of action when this was being drawn out. Samir Jasuja, founder and MD of Prop Equity. Gentlemen, I couldn't have asked for a better panel. But before I go on and ask you the questions, let me just actually quickly see what's happened. Let's do a status check, frankly. Mission Housing for All 2022 was launched on 17th June 2015. So we're really a year, a year apart from there, a year ahead. Mission to build 6 crore homes, 2 crore in urban and 4 crore in rural India, which translates into 85 lakh homes every year. Now, the number is was so staggering that even we were wondering how could the government even comprehend such a massive policy. If you take urban alone, India needs to build 30 lakh homes in the sub, let's say 15 lakh, 10 to 15 lakh category to meet this mission. Now, let's see what's happened July 2016 and we're going to show you data taken from the housing ministry website for urban housing because there's still no data on rural on the site. We added the project sanctioned proposed houses and those built under four schemes of the government and guess what the number showed. Total houses completed 1645. We understand that real estate houses don't get constructed in a year. So yes, this were probably houses which were started earlier and have got completed but still number 1645. Total houses proposed. Now remember if you got to meet that mission just on urban housing you've got to make 30 lakh homes every year. But total houses proposed by the ministry itself are only 7.28 lakhs. So there's a shortfall of 22.7 lakh. I'm not going to go into the details of what schemes these are. There's in situ slum rehabilitation, then there are other affordable housing, private partnership projects. So, so th these are under four schemes. Prof Mr. Ramachandran, what's going on? I mean, where are we on this? I mean, you should be focusing on this or must be watching this very closely. Were you surprised when the government came out with such a humongous target? Yes, uh, the target uh, really appeared to be very huge. But I always give credit to the government for at least starting off with a target because this did not exist before. But Dr. Ramachandran, why put a target which looks absolutely unachievable? I mean, look at our track record. What gave them that comfort or the I mean or any confidence that this could be completed or we, be, be, be we met. Can, we can have an ambitious target we can have a very modest target mm -hmm. but looking at the requirement if the target is kept in terms of what is the requirement and 2022 I think I'm sure you will take note of the fact that in the initial phase it was launched in June last year you're talking about one year later so initial phase it takes some time for the states also to gear up as to where they want these houses built and what <laughs> is the project which they're preparing and sending to the central ministry so it's a question of approval and in terms of approval it has reached a figure of close to 10 lakhs if my figures are correct mm -hmm. so that is the approval provided so far now approval construction this process goes on and ideally it would start picking up after one or two or three years or so and then it will suddenly reach a peak in the fourth fifth sixth year when there are sufficient sanctions funds released released and states are in a position to execute this i'm sure you will also note the di difference here in the sense that uh, these are essentially government sector construction. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where the private sector is chipping in. I don't have much of a figures on that. If they are also coming in, nothing like it, then probably it will move faster. So it's the same existing machinery of government which has to undertake this task. It was being done in other forms earlier, but if we compare the figures of present with the other forms earlier, for the rural Indira Avas or for the urban the, under the JNNURM, what happened under BSUP, I, I do expect 
I, I, I think the analysis seeing, okay, would be so, correct. So let me ask you a very simple question. Do you see with the change of government acceleration at least in this whole mission of creating affordable housing? Do you, do you feel that we are on the runway? I would at think least? so. I would, you think, would, say, so, okay, I would think so. Okay, that's a very, very positive statement coming there. Niranjan Hiranandani, come in here. I mean, of course, this is a very, very different segment of housing that we are talking about. It affects your city the maximum. I mean, in situ slum rehabilitation has been such a such a large challenge uh, for that city. And and if if you were to evaluate what's happened in the last two years of the new government in your state, what would you say? I would say exactly the same thing, that uh, uh, intention is fantastic. It is absolutely on the ball. Mm -hmm. Mr. Devendra Fadnavis has repeated it, has made ease of doing business, moved towards it, uh, declared the intention. Our state housing policy has started making the necessary moves and noises about it. But implementation has still not started. So I think we have to see that off the ground very quickly. <coughs> One of the big things where the decisions of the government, both at the central and state for Mumbai, has seen a paradigm change is the fact that 2,500 acres of salt pan lands are now going to be used for affordable housing and economically weaker section housing. I think this is a big move. Okay, Gulam. So, so three thumbs up saying that, okay, intent is there and you are seeing some amount of action. These things, I mean, in a democracy do take time to aggregate something like land, to get states on board. Everything will take its time. Now, we are talking just about the EWS LID segment. We are not talking about the segment that developers are calling affordable, which is, you know, 25 to 35, 40 lakhs. There's a huge pent up demand there, but really for the bottom of the pyramid population of India, which requires that basic dignity, which is a roof over their head. I, are you enthused by the mission and, and the action which has happened so far? Well, uh, whatever I've heard so far, it's, it's, it's clear that uh, we are talking about a vision. I would not really call it even a uh, 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 you know, strategy or anything. To me, it's a vision that the the topmost leader of the country has put for the country. But then, when the vision has to change into mission and to action and to strategy and plan of action, <coughs> well, there is not much seen yet. When I hear you talking, you gave certain number, and the first panelist spoke about uh, 10 lakh approvals, etc. It shows that there is a clear lack of communication. If there is something already happening then we as stakeholders also need to know because whatever said and done even if it's a small role that the real estate sector existing real estate sector of india will play in it but they will nonetheless be a, an important stakeholder in the whole thing so i agree that the government machinery will be doing a huge chunk but first of all whether the government machinery has done this kind of a job earlier is itself a big question today when we talk about the road sector mind you the road work is going on for so long it's for the first time somebody has put up a vision in front of us that everybody must have a house on top of his, his or her head. Now, how long will it take? So, it's, it's got to have some kind of an action plan coming in front of every citizen of the country. So, it's not enough only to say that I have a certain 10 lakh approval given. But then, once again, if you talk about the vision and the target that we have set for ourselves, what are we doing to achieve or what are we going to reach? How are we going to reach that distance? Something that's very important for all of us to know. And, and to me, that communication is not forthrightly coming. Okay. The, the four schemes that I see, and I'm just going to look at some of the data, the mission provides, and Dr. Ramachandran, I'm going to come back to you. You said the mission, uh, the mission provides central assistance to urban local bodies and agencies for states through four mediums, the in-situ rehabilitation of slum dwellers through private participation, credit link subsidy, affordable housing in partnership, again, I'm assuming is with private parties, and subsidiary for beneficiary-led individual housing construction enhancement. Now, some states have already been ahead in the game like Gujarat and Maharashtra at some level and there are some states like Haryana and etc who, who don't even have a plan or, or just anything at all in terms of they've not come out with any policy at all for, for uh, affordable housing. Weigh in all of this for us and tell us that really is the, you said the government has been doing it but either centre or state and this is state actually, centre there's only one policy but if 
are they capable of creating such a housing stock and don't you think that private participation should have been far more closer like Gulam has just pointed out that there's we're not hearing enough. I mean, our builders, developers being called who've got experience in doing all of this, that come talk to us on the table and tell us how do we make this possible. I do not see much scope for private participation as far as this segment is concerned. Really? So I you're mean, saying that all of this has to be done by the government? What, 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 what is proposed is for the lowest segment for which I think they have to... Uh, de be dependent on government sources of funding. If there is a private participation coming in as far as building is concerned, that mm. is going to add to the cost. Now, as far as communication is concerned, I think there is communication with respect to whoever is concerned. Now, okay. any, any website if you take up and in any particular state, you refer to some states which are uh, forward in this, there are 11 states which have got approval so far. So, there are certain number of other states who have not been able to get uh, to get the process moving and get the approvals. So ultimately it's a question of where the action should be. Once a scheme is formulated, what it, it is known to the states and how do the states take it forward and again we must think we must consider uh, even if you take the example of um, highways it is in certain segments here it is spread out in 4000 plus cities and towns of the country so it's not uh, something which is going to happen in 20 or 30 cities so you have to get this aggregated looking for land looking for the beneficiaries what is the type of, of uh, finance which should be made available which would be the source of the, the the construction agency which would be undertaking this task let me ask Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani. Mr. Hiranandani, would you be interested in building homes under 15 lakh rupees? Would developers be in general? Uh, I would love to do it. The problem is land cost. I have already proposed to the state government, Mr. Devendra Fadnavis, that we would like to do this segment of housing and take up a small portion or a big portion, depending on how much he can give us, and make it on a cost-to-cost -cost basis and return it back to government in terms of constructed areas. Uh, we'd like to do it on behalf of Naredco, we'd like to do it on behalf of our company, we'd like to participate, but as uh, our Honorable Secretary has mentioned, uh, if the government is doing it itself, it's fine with us, but we can also participate in this segment to the extent that the government desires us to do so, and we'd be very happy to do so. We can only hope, gentlemen, that the public and the private partnership here really works. The state governments realize they need the private developers and private developers say it's a national task. In fact, I think everyone should get together and do it simply because you could have that big real economic booster which comes from just construction activity. Imagine if so many houses started getting built, the boost you would get to GDP. Thank you so much, Niranjan Hiranandani. Pleasure to have you with us, Gulam Zia. Thank you so much, Sudhir Vora, Dr. Ramachandran and Samir Jasuja. Well, there are larger states, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Haryana, which haven't even started off when it comes to affordable housing. But then there are also states which have been very progressive and are going great guns with it and they just need to keep up with the momentum. We are keeping our fingers crossed. We'll come back with a report card. Affordable housing, basic need, everyone must have a roof over their head. Thank you so much for joining me. Goodbye.